started with Helene St. James. Hey Sam, just going back to Friday, how much did it mean to all the guys uh, to get Tyler's 30th goal? Yeah, it was good. I mean, um, he's uh, he's a great teammate. He competes really hard. Um, uh, and he had a great year. So, um, you know, we, we knew he was on 29. And, um, you know, it was just one of those situations where I think everyone was trying to feed him, uh, get him chances. He had a few great chances throughout the game. And then, um, you know, I, his reaction when he hit the post there uh, with about 15 seconds left was pretty funny. But then he was able to put one in. So um, certainly a cool moment. I mean, scoring 30 goals in this league is a really hard thing to do. Um, you know, so when you have a guy within within distance, um, you want to try and uh, help him out. What does it kind of say about the team that, you know, I mean, there were 10 seconds left in, in, in the season that that it, that how much it mattered? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's a great group of guys. Um, you know, I, I it's, uh, you know, we, we have fun together. We, we want to see each other succeed. Um, you know, obviously you want the last game of the year to be, uh, gearing up for playoffs and and preparing for for that but um when that doesn't happen um you know you, you, there's so many things to play for and playing for each other is one of them and you know i think you see the reaction of guys when uh when bert was able to get his 30th and um you know i think it's a great thing that guys are pulling for each other and um we got to continue to do that if uh if we're going to be a team in the future that has success i don't know if you've had a chance to meet with steve uh, for exit interviews yet but has he given you any kind of feedback on uh, i know you would like to come back but mm. where you stand no i i haven't yet um you know my kids are in school and we plan on staying in michigan for a bit so um you know i don't i don't expect uh, that meeting to happen uh, uh in the next few days or so but um yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, I, like, like I've, I've said multiple times, I've really enjoyed my time here. I feel like I've, uh, <clears throat> grown with this group and, um, you know, I still feel, even though, uh, I'm a veteran that, uh, um, I have some years left and, and, um, I have, uh, you know, I can, I can help this group continue to grow. So, uh, I'd like to be back, but, uh, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot at play and um, I'm just going to go about my business and, and try and be prepared as I can for next year and see what happens. Thanks, Sam. And Sarkhan. Uh, yes, yeah, Sam, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, you've seen your uh, share of coaching changes uh, through the years and we see it a lot to where a change is made and for whatever reason, it seems to spark a team just any theories on that? I mean, just, is, is it just a case where it just seems to get players attention and they just, uh, it just raises their game a little bit more, kind of forces them to, to, to kind of uh, take it up to a next level. Or what do you think the, the reasons, some of the reasons are for that? Yeah, I'm sure that's part of it. I mean, I, I think uh, anytime a new coach comes in, um, you know, you want to prove yourself to him individually. Um, and, you know, so that's part of it. Um, I think, you know, a new voice sometimes um, just kind of uh, uh, allows guys to see it from a different perspective and, and uh, continue to grow as a group. I mean, um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Blash and, and the way that uh, he's handled things um, over the years that I've been here. Um, I think he's a great person. He cares about, uh, cares about his players and, you know, I th think as a player, um, that's what you want most is uh, uh, is a coach that cares about you and wants you to succeed and, and, and tries to help you become a better player. And uh, I feel like I've grown as a player under Blash and, um, you know, I certainly kind of, uh, you know, wish him success and and whatever comes next for him. Thanks, Sam. Max Boltman. Hey, Sam, just to follow up on that, I'm, I'm curious, do you think that that carryover effect of a new coach is it usually you see that kind of I think in season where like you know Vancouver this year they, they go on a run but like does that carry over when it's a end of year to start of a new season or is it a different thing you think um yeah I think so I mean it, it's uh, obviously different different under different coaches um uh you know I I, I know 
when I was in Columbus, um, Torts was there the year prior, and uh, there wasn't really much of an improvement uh, from when he came into the in midseason. And then uh, the next year, uh, with a full training camp under his belt, we we kind of took off. So, um, you know, it, it's different under every circumstance, um, uh, you know, different under different coaches. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. Um, but, you know, ultimately it's on the players to, to put their game on the ice and, and uh, find, find improvements. I think, um, you know, individually there was guys that, uh, that improved this year and, you know, guys that, that didn't and um, for whatever reason. And, um, you know, if you're going to be a successful team, um, the players have to drive the bus and, and um, be the ones that are, are, are pushing things forward. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, coach is part of that. And I think, um, you know, uh, there's a change being made. And um, as players, you have to, to be ready and accountable and coachable and all those different types of things. And it's a big summer for us to prepare uh, going into next year. Have you had your uh, exit meeting or I guess with Steve yet? Not yet. No. When you do, I mean, when you're in the situation as you are going into potentially free agency and obviously a veteran player, I'm sure like to make the, like how much do you questions do you ask him, I guess, about his direction or do you just kind of let him carry the conversation, I guess? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, I mean, it's Steve Eiserman, right? Uh, you, you know, you, you trust, um, you trust what what he's trying to do with the with the club and um you know i think uh there's been improvements since he's got here and uh, there's going to be continue to be improvements I, I think you know he's got a great hockey mind and um he's going to make the decisions that he feels are best to to help move this group forward um you know i know you know sometimes your your timeline and and um you know, how quickly you can turn it around is there, there's so many uh, uncontrollables, um, you know, where you draft, uh, which free agents are, are, are interested in coming, all those different types of things, um, you know, the price point, salary cap, everything, right? So, um, you know, I, I think there's there's going to be a lot that plays out from now until um, free agency and then until training camp. And, um, you know, I, I think I've – you know, I, I've said it, I, I, I've really enjoyed my time here and I'm hopeful that I can be part of things moving forward. I, um, you know, I still feel uh, like I have, you know, I don't feel like I'm a year to year. Uh, I feel like I, I have a lot of game left. I feel like I had a really good year this year, um, you know, given my, um, you know, role and responsibility, all those different types of things. I, I feel like I helped the group move forward and uh, I'd like to be a, a part of things, but, you know, I understand, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happen and, um, they have options. And, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go about my business and, uh, try to be ready for day one of training camp. And then I guess last thing, like, what would it mean to you personally to be part of this specific team as they, whenever they do take that next step and they, you know, are in the playoffs or potentially winning in the playoffs, what would that mean to you personally? Yeah, it would mean a lot. I mean, I, I, I've been through, um, you know, I, I went through a rebuild in, in Edmonton and, and wasn't able to see the other side of it. Um, and, and I think uh, when you look at uh, what's happening here and, you know, with some of the, the young guys that have come into the lineup this year and are going to come into the lineup in future years, um, you know, I, I'd like to help, um, you know, help them navigate kind of their early pro careers and, um, you know, take it to another level. And, you know, I, I feel like um, this team has an opportunity to do some special things going forward. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm 32 now, but I, I'd like to continue to play as long as I can. And, and um, you know, I feel like with the way I play, um, my game, uh, you know, won't age <laughs> the way some, some games do. Uh, so that's what I'm hoping at least. Um, and um, yeah, I'd like to be a part of it. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens, but uh, I think you just have to keep an open mind and, and uh, try and focus on what you can control. Thanks, Sam. Bob Duff. Hey, Sam, this is kind of off the beaten track, I guess, but uh, you've had about a year now where you've owned your own hockey franchise. <laughs> I just wonder, uh, 
you know, obviously youth hockey's not the NHL, but are there things you've learned in your years in the NHL that have kind of been useful to you or helped you as you've uh, taken over running a, a youth hockey organization? Yeah, I mean, I think you learn things um, uh, all the time about, um, you know, being a player. Um, and then, you know, I think that's the main focus of, of that is uh, player development. And I've learned a lot over my years of, uh, you know, what it takes to be a successful player in this league. And then, um, you know, seeing other players, seeing decisions that, you know, managers make, coaches make in every facet of life with that for sure. Is it something that you look upon as a post career thing or how heavily are you involved right now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's, you know, my main focus right now is um, being the best player I can be. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, try to lend uh, help and advice uh, wherever I can there, but, you know, we have really good people involved and keep me updated and uh, you know, just trying to uh, help it in any way I can. Yeah, we were in uh, hockey players started by a junior friend. I was a kind of set a trend go when you think uh, you're going to be a trend center of any other players uh, kind of suggested or asked you how you did it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I, I didn't get into it for that. I mean, um, I, you know, I really enjoyed my time as a, as a Marlboro when I was a kid and I owe a lot um, to, you know, the, the career I've had, I owe a lot to the Marlboros for it. And, um, you know, I just, I, I felt like it was a great opportunity to help and, and uh, help, um, you know, continue with the, the great tradition that they have and, and um, you know, try and try and move it forward. So that was kind of the main focus behind that. Thanks a lot. Ed Colfin. So you and Tavares aren't getting like disgruntled emails from parents about officiating or anything like that? Uh, not yet. I'm sure it'll come at some point, but I uh, haven't heard anything yet. Hey, just put a bow tie in this season, Sam. I mean, for, it seems like it was a tale of two halves. That first half, you know, things were going pretty well, but the <laughs> second half of the season, I mean, what do you think happened? Um, I mean, you know, part of it was um, – Part of it was strength of schedule. I mean, uh, you know, I think the way the first the first half of the season lined up for us, um, you know, we had practice time. We were playing against teams that were kind of, um, you know, we played against more teams that were kind of in our position as well. And then, you know, I, I think we ran into a stretch there where uh, back half of the season we were playing against some of the top teams. And, um, you know, when the results don't go the way you want, I think there's a – you know, just the natural human emotion um, and there's a letdown. And, you know, I felt like um, we hung in there um, in the race, the playoff race for a little bit. And when that kind of fell from under us and, you know, we felt like that wasn't uh, going to happen anymore. Um, our game slipped. And, you know, I think the last little bit um, we found a way to um, to get it back um, for the most part. I mean, obviously we dealt with some, some injuries down the stretch and, um, uh, you know, we, we didn't uh, have our full lineup, but, um, you know, I think we, we were playing harder. We were um, uh, a better team defensively than we were for that stretch. But I think that's the main thing for us. I think we took strides offensively this year, but um, we took a step back defensively. And uh, if you're going to be a successful team in this league, um, you have to be able to check, you have to be able to defend. And um, we didn't do that well enough uh, or consistently enough this year. You see, I'm go, um, going back to the Blashill situation, when a coach gets fired, I mean, do you guys as a team kind of like, I don't know, kinda like bear some of the responsibility? You know what I mean? I mean, has it got a kind of a bad feeling that way too? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, like I said before, um, you know, Blash is a great person. Um, Doug Huda, a great person. Um, and, and Sal as well. I mean, um, you know, I, I just know from, from experience and, and uh, getting the chance to work with them, um, uh, you know, working with Hood specifically on the penalty kill and, and, and Blash, um, you know, with, uh, you know, just the overall team play. Um, they really cared about us as players and they wanted us to succeed. And, and, um, they, 
uh, tried to help us, you know, right to the end. And, um, you know, as a player, uh, you're really appreciative of that. I mean, I know personally that um, I think about the game all the time. Um, I'm always uh, trying to think of ways to get better, improve upon my game. And and when you have coaches that um, take the time to, to try and develop you as a player and, and as a person, and, and even, you know, I, I think you talk about development of, of young players. I mean, I, I still feel like I have a lot of room to grow as a player too. And, and you, you know, you want coaches that are going to try and help you. And I thought they did a great job of that. And, um, you know, I'm thankful for uh, the time I got to spend with them. Um, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a better player in person for it. That was good. Thanks for this, Sam. Last question, Art Regner. Hi, Sam. Um, I know that what you're going to play a thousand games next year in the league, you'll hit that mark. And uh, so obviously you've seen coaches come and go. And there is this theory that regardless of whomever the coach is, that eventually the message does become maybe too repetitive to stale to a certain degree do you buy into that is it just the the fact of human nature regardless if you're a hockey player or not eventually if someone is constantly kind of in this aspect coaching you up that you know sometimes you just you might be listening but you're not hearing so to speak um you know, I, I won't speak specifically to the situation we we're just in. I think, like I said, I don't think anybody ever tuned anybody out. Um, uh, just a situation where, um, you know, uh, Steve gave you his reasons for, um, you know, why he, he made the decision. And, and uh, I think, you know, we all respect those decisions. And, um, but as a general rule, I think, I mean, you're, you're, you're hearing from the coach, um, you know, uh, on an everyday basis throughout the season. And, um, it's, you know, the, the message, um, generally, uh, is the same. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, you, you know, you look around and, and general managers and, um, you know, uh, th those positions, uh, guys seem to last longer than coaches and it's just kind of the way it's been. And, you know, across all sports, um, so, I mean, yeah, it's certainly part of it. I think, um, you know, there it, it's, it's a hard thing. And I think if you look at the job, you know, Blash has done here specifically, I mean, uh, it's kind of been through rebuilding times and, um, I think he's done a great job of, uh, of, you know, trying to keep the group on task and, um, uh, try and keep the message clear and, and make sure that, you know, guys are held accountable and, um, you know, as it goes on over time, it's, it's, you know, I, I think it's a tough thing to continue to do and Blash kept doing it. So, um, I think, uh, it's a credit to him and, uh, looking forward to, to seeing him, uh, back in the league at some point. Yeah. You know, uh, final question, Steve brought up the, the word, and he wasn't sure it was correct yesterday or not, that he felt the team had plateaued. And mm -hmm. I asked Dylan this earlier, but I mean, from your perspective, I know players are always trying to win and effort was never really much of an issue with the Red Wings this year, but is there validity into that, that no matter what you fellows go out there and try to do, you're at your zenith, so to speak. You're, you're as good as you are and there you are. Uh, I mean, I, I think um, that's maybe a, a bit of a, you know, overgeneralization. I think there's, there's areas of your game always that you can improve. Um, you know, I think when, you know, he, when Stevie uses that word, he, um, I, you know, I, I think it's just, uh, there was, there was areas of our game that we felt that um, didn't improve um, on a year to year basis. And, um, you know, they're, they're big parts of the game that, that we need them to improve if we're going to have a successful team. So, um, you know, I think that's part of it. I think there was improvement in a lot of areas. Um, you know, I think you look at some of the years uh, offensively that, um, you know, some guys had and, um, you know, uh, we uh, added some young players that really took steps forward, um, you know, took on bigger roles, all those different types of things. So, um, 
there was certainly uh, improvement in some areas. And then there was areas where we didn't improve as, as much as we had hoped. So I think uh, ultimately like, that that's that's what we're uh, going into next year um, on an individual basis. Everyone needs to improve on those certain types of things. And then from team play, um, we have to be better defensively and we have to be better at managing the puck. And, you know, if we can do those things, um, we'll put ourselves in a uh, we'll give ourselves a better opportunity to win. I mean, it's a tough division. You look at, I think the, you know, the playoff teams, the, the lowest team has 107 points. It's uh, so it's uh, it, it, it was tough sledding, but we had to come back next year and, and, you know, fight for a playoff spot. And that's, that's the focus. Uh, I know I said final question, but this is, I promise the final question. All good. All good. Okay, good. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I am kind of uh, curious that Mo Sider, what he was able to do, nothing against Lucas or any of the fine young rookies that, that, that came into the league, but, can you explain from your perspective, a 20, a just turned 21 year old defenseman, what he was able to do, which was rather quickly establish himself as not only the number one defenseman on the Red Wings, but one of maybe the top blue liners in the entire league? Yeah, I mean, I, I think. I think Mo earned a ton of respect around the league this year, um, not only from his teammates, from but from opponents, just the way he played, the way he carried himself. I think, you know, you look back to the first game of the year um, against Tampa and he was already um, kind of commanding that respect and um, uh, not afraid of the moment. And um, he just continued to grow. I mean, it's a, uh, it's, it's a long year when you haven't played in the NHL before. Um, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs. And then, you know, specifically with our season, um, you know, with, with uh, the struggles we went through in the second half, it, it makes it feel even longer. And, and Mo just kept playing, um, kept improving. Um, he was, you know, he, he playing huge minutes on the penalty kill, the power play, even strength going up against top lines. Uh, he really did it all for us. And, uh, you know, from an off ice perspective, he's, he's already become a leader for us. Um, you know, he, he understands um, the, the, the leadership aspect of it and, and, and isn't afraid to, to be himself. So um, I think the sky's the limit for him. Uh, we have a ton of respect for him within our room and uh, just looking forward to, to seeing, um, uh, you know, what he can do in the future here. Thank you very much, Sam. I appreciate your time and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.